Is it? Okay. Yeah. We are ready. On the record. I'll go ahead and call this April 12th work session to order at 530 with the topic of the Seward Animal Shelter. And, um, sorry, that was a little poor. <laughs> um, I'll turn it over to administration. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, presentation by the Chief and uh, Lieutenant. And Go ahead. Uh, Dustin, would you wake us back to Council, thanks for giving us the opportunity to present this to you tonight. We're going to talk about um, the idea of building a new animal control uh, shelter here in Seward. So what's wrong with what we currently have? Uh, the current animal shelter, as you guys know, is um, it's very small. It's run down. It's well inside the tsunami inundation zone. And it's located in a uh, residential area, which over the years has been a source of a lot of uh, calls for service for uh, the police department. For over 20 years, the animal shelter has not enjoyed any significant changes or upgrades. The current building has no restroom, and the employees are provided, and the public, are provided a porta potty outside. Um, like I said up there, you know, this can be a... Uh, a jolting experience in the winter around here, so um, not not the best thing. In the event of a community emergency, the shelter has no ability there to expand and take on the needs of the community finding itself displaced uh, suddenly should we have a, a tsunami or an earthquake event. Um, there is no... There's no way there to uh, quarantine sick animals. And uh, we, we've had things like parvo come in before. Um, and so in such a small space, it can, it can uh, spread very easily, which is very dangerous to any animal there. Um, and there's no, no, no place for a veterinarian to conduct a thorough exam at the shelter. And then space for supplies is extremely limited. So what, is, what do we need? The community needs a larger functional space with room to store supplies and space to separate animals who might be sick. The community needs the space to, to be sustainable and maintainable by 1.5 employees. That's what we have, one, one full-time and one half-time employee. The community needs to be able to provide humane kennel space for the animals with room for exercise while we can still maintain control of those animals. And the community needs the space to not be so large as to cause a financial drain to maintain it. You know, we're not, we're not going to be able to easily hire a cleaning company. We don't have that in our budget. Um, uh, Shelley's budget is, is very small. So what you're about to see is a model that's built in-house by Deputy Chief Carl Schaefer-Meyer. Um, we've all come together on this and uh, talked about the things that are needed, and, and ultimately, you know, we listen to Shelly. You know, she's, she's the one that works there. She knows more about this than anyone in the community. Um, you know, she, she uh, has a presentation with her tonight that she put together clear back in uh, 2012. You know, um, so this is something that she has had on her mind for a very long time, and uh, we're trying to give her the support to actually see this come to fruition. So we hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Uh, Carl's done an amazing job on this, so we hope you enjoy it. So first off, we have a, a website that we launched today where um, people can go on, or the public can go on and look at our thing we're going to look at today. Shelly's design, she did that in 2012. Um, so, taking her down to what we need and what was the service the community and be 
sustainable for uh, one or two uh, employees to run and manage. So I came up with a, uh, a space that's about 50 foot by 40 foot interior, so about 2,000 square feet interior, and then uh, an additional uh, about 1,000 feet exterior, uh, covered uh, kennels outside and a, a fence play area. Uh, so I'll do a, a walkthrough video. got the main entry area. Um, this will serve as a, the uh, reception and the office, and then a, an ADA size bathroom for the public use. Um, so the reception will have uh, enough, and, that, and everything that's, that's pictured here, it's just a uh, kind of placeholder to kind of give you the scale of what the room will look like. So all the interior design that's, uh, can be determined later. Um, so from the reception, we have a hallway that can access lockers and support employees can take showers if they get in the mess and, and also do laundry. Uh, we'll have a storage area that will uh, be quite a big uh, upgrade from what we have now. Uh, we can put more stuff in. And we'll have a, a pet wash where the public can bring their own pets in and wash them. Um, that's accessible from the outside as well. Uh, we'll have a utility room. where We're going to keep uh, janitorial things and also any type of boilers or whatever. Um, needed to, uh, to heat the facility. Um, uh, then we'll have a quarantine slash exam room uh, where we can keep uh, quarantined animals and also do uh, exams. And, and we'll have a kitchen break room for the employees. And then the kennels, which we'll have, we have five kennels for dogs here. They're all about uh, seven foot by ten foot, or five foot by ten foot. Um, and we can adjust those as needed. Uh, we'll have a cat room. We'll have uh, some kennels for cats. And all these, all these kennels have a, 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 a door to go out to the outside. And that's what we'll have the uh, outdoor kennel space. So again, five uh, dog kennels that can be adjusted to size as we need. And uh, the other far end will have the, the cats outdoor space. And then a, a large uh, kind of grass play area for the animals. So that would, uh, like I said, that's about almost 2,000 square feet interior, so it's quite a bit uh, smaller than what the uh, prior proposal was. And, uh, but it would still give us the, the functionality we need and still be manageable for one or two employees to run at the same time. So I put that together, and also I have a, for anybody that's interested later, if there's time tonight, there's also a VR walkthrough where you can put on a headset and kind of walk through it to give you a more easier way to, to see the space and how much room there would still be. So any, any questions that uh, anybody might have on that? So let me pull up a kind of overhead shot here. Give you another another view of what it would look like inside. Would it be okay if I ask some questions? Well, I kind of want to finish the presentation, and then we'll, the next very next thing after the presentation is completed is uh, public comments. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. So I wanted to, to pass it on to, to Shelley to kind of give her her thoughts on. Well, as you know, I've worked down there for about 14 years, and I've wanted this for a very long time, and I understand that that uh, you know. A great big building would be nice, and but we don't need it. This is what we need. This is perfect for for the needs of the shelter, for the needs of the community. I mean, we've got multi-use on all the rooms, so that limits, you know, having to have more space. And compared to what we have now, this is <laughs> it's a castle. <laughs> I think he's done a great job on the design and great, thank you, Shane.
So gains, what have we gained? So the building that you've just witnessed would put a check, nar check mark next to our needs. The location that's been picked out by Director Wild wisely places the shelter out of the tsunami zone and away from residential housing. The shelter will have plenty of room to expand into tents in the event of a community emergency. And the ADA approved restroom for staff and citizens will let everyone enjoy their visit. So how do we get this done? So Community Director Wild will be putting together an RFP to design, permit, and build the shelter. Uh, with your permission, of course. This will save us a lot of money, and, and this is the most cost-effective route. We can get this uh, underway, you know, as soon as we select a bidder. What are we looking at for cost? So the, the model you just looked at, as Carl said, is 2,000 square feet. Um, so what I did was I, I estimated, you know, at, at 200 to $250 a square foot, that puts us in the four hundred to five hundred thousand dollar price range, um, and then for upfitting on a building like this, um, you know, obviously costs can grow quite a bit. Um, in the original plan, there was some stuff in there that we weren't really sure if we needed or not, like um, an emaciator for um, animal fecal material. You know, but um, what you need to know about that is here, we don't we don't put any of the animal feces in the sewer system. We we pick it up and dispose of it regularly. You know, in in the in the garbage. So um, I don't think that we're going to need that sort of stuff. We've been doing a lot of research on it. We're trying to get those answers. Um, so I think that we're going to be able to work around most of that, and it's going to save us a lot of money. But um, so the ultimate estimate here that I came up with was $800,000 or less. So a timeline. Uh, Mid-April, right where we're at right now, to May of next month, uh, we'll get this RFP out to bid. And then in May, when the bid process is over, we would bring it back, uh, select a winner, and then uh, June to August, um, you know, I can't speak for the contractors, obviously, and what their schedules will allow, but hopefully we would be able to begin construction, and then in, uh, by spring of 2022, have a grand opening and uh, community event, you know, have something fun, you know, bring, bring your pets over, bring your kids over, visit, walk through, and have a little barbecue, something like that, uh, let people get to see it. And questions, again, thanks for letting us do this. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer as best we can. Yeah, great presentation. It's not a question, but just for the public, this is the same location that we have been planning on across the street from the elementary school. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Just so people know that nothing about that's changed. Yeah. Um, uh, let's do public questions first, ma'am. You you said you wanted to speak. Yeah. Um, so my first question is, uh, how is there an area where animals that are in the animal control truck can be transferred to the facility without having to be out in the open? Is there going to be an out perimeter gate in the parking area like there is now at the shelter? Um, at current, it would, is that right? Yeah, yeah, let's answer questions. Um, at current, uh, that's not part of our plan, but that may be something that we need to take a look at. So that's, that's all right. Yeah, I mean, this is amazing. This is very compact, very cool design. Uh, but that's one concern is to be able to safely transfer an animal who's frightened, maybe even dangerous, next to a school to be able to safely transfer it into the shelter. Okay, thank um, you. Did you have, did you have a, anything else? I, I do have a couple more questions, okay. if that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, my next question is, um, we were talking about keeping cleaning costs low. Um, having the animal, 
washing station inside. That seems like that's going to be a lot of work for the shelter employees to keep that clean. Do we want to maybe have it outside? I can answer that if you'd like. Yeah. Um, the, the information that we've received on pet washing, all of them that we have spoke to, that I have spoke to, they are inside the building. Um, there's a drain system in there. It's very minimal maintenance that the staff has to endure. The pet wash itself is just like car wash. You go wash your pet. You're expected to clean up after. Um, Shelly and I have spoke about it multiple times. Um, this layout is exactly how um, two of them are in here in Alaska, giving the ability for them to access it from the front. But for her, maintenance-wise, if she just needs to go in and do a quick walk around, make sure it's all clean. But it's it's really pretty self-sufficient. The people take really good care of what is there and encourage you. Yeah, that's great to hear because having bathed many, many a dog in my life, uh, hair gets everywhere. <laughs> it sticks to everything. And we can't guarantee that every public person is going to clean out the drain and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think just don't want to make, make it a burden on the staff already working hard at the shelter. Yeah, cleaning fee. That's a good idea. Cleaning fee. Cleaning fee if they don't clean up after yeah. themselves. Well, under. Well, it, yeah, and it just good. just so you know, this type of pet wash, um, it has its own system that has a drain that catches the hair, has a separator, also gives you the ability, I mean, I take my dogs to the one in Anchorage quite often, so I know how the process works, and yes, I have a corgi, so I know all about yeah. hair, yeah. <laughs> but um, it is a really clean process, and it's not that much time for the individual that's spending the money to get their animal washed to clean up. I'll let you continue if you have a couple more. I do. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my next question is, um, if intake exams are happening in the quarantine room, what are the, where are the exams going to happen when there's an animal in the quarantine room so that the animal coming, the new animal does not get exposed to the animal that's in the quarantine room? We just uh, probably have to use one of the other, like the storage room we could set up, you know, or something like that, like we do now. I mean, we've we've managed for all these years using the draw or the washing machine, <laughs> which I know. That wasn't ideal, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that that's a that's not an ideal you know thing to do, but I think we can utilize the two rooms that way. If you do have an animal in quarantine that's sick, we could use storage and check them out there, and then either move them into general population or put them into quarantine. You know, after we're done. But actually, every animal that comes in, if we if they're not surrendered and have a vet, you know, their vaccinations and stuff, they're quarantined anyway. I mean, that's just standard procedure. So. All right. So yeah, if we're comfortable having the exam area and the quarantine area in the same place. Um, well, that would only be the exam would be in there only if you don't have a no, sick animal. Yeah. Animal. Um, and then disinfect it afterwards. Right. Um, my next question is for safety of the staff. Um, the reception area is very open. Will there be like a vestibule or a double door entry to protect the staff um, from, um, you know, way to lock doors uh, and protect themselves if someone belligerent comes in? Um, some of the places that we've seen in other facilities have like a double door type of situation so they at least can have a button to like lock the inner door. That, that might be something to consider to look into. Um, for safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at least have the reception desk maybe go all the way across and there's a locked door between the front and the back. Again, to be able to allow staff to escape yeah, if that. someone belligerent comes into the area and they're not, not feeling safe. Mm -hmm. I actually had another thought too on that. Um, if we did put a gate around the front of it, kind of like we have now, and then we could put, like, well, we have a buzzer now so that people can ring the bell and, you know, come in. Mm -hmm. So if we designed a system like a lot of other places do where you can, you know, open the gate yeah. or whatever, then you would have your, 
your you know your double door, your your safety net, and if you had any animals in the building or loose in the building, you could even, secure them. Yeah, they'd be secure too. Yeah, I know many cats come in just a cardboard box. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or like this. <laughs> yeah. Those are those are great concerns. Um, I can already see just an easy an easy fix, um, kind of what you were talking about, building a door right off of the desk um, with a you know imagine a wall there with a, a like a plexiglass window and the door there on the left hand side. Um, that alone would give you control over that space, and then um, if the person you know, was aggressive towards the staff or something like that. They have multiple ways to go. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, what you see up here is, a rep it's just a, a general representation. Yeah, it's, it's a concept. So um, it's certainly not a finished product. This is not what we're saying. Yeah. We would absolutely build. Um, you know, the contractors are going to are gonna have to put their... Um, their take on it, and they're going to advise us. Code requirements. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot's going to change before we're done, but this is just to get the creative juices flowing. So. Yeah. yeah, very helpful. Um, um, so, how about one more, and then we'll go to others? Understandable. Thank you. She said one more. Oh, well, I have one more question. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the, the greeting room it would depend on the dog and the people I mean you have the yard that they could you know meet a dog in and play with and get to know I mean I understand that there may be barking dogs in there but there may not be we could always have the dogs on the inside um, we have the cattery in the back plus the outside cattery that they could hang out and get to know a cat and my thought is on the classes since I go to school or I used to would actually go to classes and then we do have small groups and um, they will call and say 10 kids are coming so that front room would actually pass as a little classroom and then you when they come down now still we take them through the whole shelter and you know they hang out with the cats and the dogs and so it wouldn't be they wouldn't be in one room the whole time you know I mean, they could probably go out into the yard with a with a nice dog and stuff. But I I foresee that that entryway would be great for. And the, where would you see the cats? In the back, well, in the cattery or in the cat outside cattery, kind of like we have cattery. now. Because you could block, you could put one cat in the cattery, and block off, you know, the rest of the cats, and they could hang out back there with one cat or two or whatever. Mark, did you have some questions? Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name's Mark Luttrell. I'm the president of SOS Pets, a pet advocacy group that's been here since 1994. And literally for decades, we have been studying a new shelter and the attributes of it. And two years ago, four of us went over to the other side to look at uh, Soldatna, Kenai, and the Homer animal shelters. And we came back with a three-page list of all the cool things and maybe not the cool things. But now it's just a three page list of you know text on a paper. So to see this uh, presentation where you can actually walk through it is pretty darn cool. I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like it. So, you know, hats Good off. Good job, Carl. <laughs> it's really impressive. Um, there are, of course, a few things that I think would improve it. Uh, 
One is there isn't a functional multi-purpose room in there. Not one that's large for large groups of people, primarily students. It's not a welcoming place for doctors or people that are grieving um, or just visitors or staff or volunteers. It really doesn't inspire to me in, in, in my understanding of it. And that's partly due because there's no natural light to it. It feels kind of cramped. Uh, you know, if the roof line drain or slope rather to the north, you could capture some really good southern light. Uh, so I think I think what it needs to be a little larger. I mean, it captures most of the functional needs. Although just the discussion so far is we're already, you know, uh, making changes and rearranging. Um, it needs a multi-purpose room, it needs some natural light, and it needs to just be more welcoming somehow, so that people coming out of there are crying because this is the coolest place I've ever seen, rather than, damn it, here's enough, my dog's not going to survive, it's, you know, that's not days, it's going to be euthanized. I know that doesn't happen, but that, they might think that. See what I'm getting at? Can I add something? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just, you know, basic. Once we get our hands in there, I mean, you know me. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna make it homey. I'm going to make it comfortable for, you know, for everybody so that they feel good about coming in there. I, I mean, look job. at what we have now, you know, and it's comfortable. People come in and think it's awesome, even though it's pretty gross little building. <laughs> So just imagine what we could do with this, you know. Well, if there were some minor structural changes, and I'm not talking about the Taj Mahal. Right. Just some minor structural changes, we could we could prevent having to sort of backfill and retro and deal with problems in the future. If we start now, maybe invest another couple hundred thousand bucks, get that million dollars that the city has allocated. So to maybe us. the question is. Do yeah. we keep going with what we're going so till we get the building that's the you know, I guess I'm at the point where what we have is no longer okay. So are we gonna design ourselves into something that will never happen? No, no, no. That's this, my main concern. This, one of my concerns is mm -hmm. this this needs some discussion. Mm -hmm. Just like the Yeah, that's what we're so well, I think just like the Luna design that was yeah. presented provided to the city a year ago, mm -hmm. there was never any discussion with the public and, and people like me and Jane and others have expertise. So now here we are, and I love it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. this is the moment I've been waiting for for a long time. Maybe. But we, there's still some, some work that needs to be done, and I would like to see us meet, uh, whoever's interested, meet uh, and, and talk about some of these details like Jane's bringing you know, up. There's more I could add, too. Yeah, I think we did have a work session on the other design, though. Didn't we? So. Yeah, we had at least one work session on the other design. Um, so, do you want to bring up a few of those points right now, Mark? Because we're here. It's we're all right here. here. This well, is what it's for. But is there a possibility that SOS Pets and other members of the public can meet? This is the meeting. Time? This is the opportunity. So, I mean, that's that's what we're doing tonight is, is to is have city, comments. So the city council will soon make a decision on this design? Well, it'll like come it. back on a design bid build. So, I mean, now it would be that that's why we're having a work session to, you know, get comments from the public. You know, I'm sure you can send a follow-up email. Madam Mayor, if I can answer just a couple of those, um, you know, we, Mr. Latrell mentioned Lumen Designs, and you know, the whole reason we're back at, in my mind, stage one, is because um, originally the Lumen Design had all these architectural features that cost a lot of money, and you know, the overall design was at 2.2 million dollars. We tried to cut that back, but, you know, at the end of the day when we sit around just like we are doing right here, 
we have to look at how it can be maintained, how, how much it's going to cost us in the future, and how much it's going to cost in general. Um, you know, this size of building, Shelly, your building 700 square feet right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Close I think it's to, less, yeah, a little less than that. So, you know, a 2,000 square foot building is adding to what she's already got, and she maintains with 1.5 staff people and a very minimal budget. And, you know, we've always wanted public input, but at the end, when it comes down to it, it is a city building and a city build. And when it comes down to deciding whether or not we have a lot of architectural features or we pay for the things that we need to maintain that building, that's the direction we should always go. Yeah, but um, I think that there's been, like now is a good opportunity absolutely. to have the public put, because I think there's a couple things that have already been brought mm -hmm. up, and I think there's other things that maybe aren't, uh, you know, reflected here. So, well, I'll just, Linda, before I go to you, I'll check back with um, Mark if he wants to make some more comments. Well, Are there items in, in here that you'd like to see? Well, yeah, I mean, there's... 1,907 square feet for the shelter. There's over 3,000 feet for parking. There's no solar. There's 20 doors. There's that odd room in the middle that's got four doors. That seems like kind of an odd thing and a waste of space and maybe just inconvenient. Uh, what about noise abatement from the uh, generators and also inside the kennels. Um, yeah, what I'm get, what I'm really getting at is there's a lot of little nitpicky things that this isn't the right format uh, forum to deal with some of this duct tape level stuff. And I'd, I'd like to just have a more you know beer and pizza sort of meeting sometime. I mean, I, I just worry that that's going to just delay us and delay us. Right. I mean, I think some of this stuff will be ironed about, out with the contractor. How about too. one week? Well, let's do it in a week. A week. Let's meet in a week. Mm -hmm. They've had, they've had uh, well, plenty of time to comment on, on, on so everything. Maybe, and, then, and, and so no, maybe, maybe, maybe co emails. I don't know if the chief is willing to meet and just look at a couple details or emails or what's the best way to get... I mean, it's, if it's designed to build, a lot of this stuff will get changed within that process. I, th I don't think there's anything wrong with sending in a list of things that you'd like to see. You know, okay. um, that's that's fine. But um, at the end of the day, you know, we need to make something happen, right. and we need to go with what city council can support. You know, and um, and so when. As we're building the RFP, you know, anything that we think we can fit in there off of your list, then we tell the contractors, these are the things that we would like to see. And if, if they can do it and these constraints, then then great, you know. Um, so, you know so let's let's stay on budget, that's important, and let's let's meet as many of the needs as we possibly can. That's the way I see it. Like let's let's accomplish something. That's exactly what I want to do. Maybe we can all sit down and compromise <laughs> so we Let's can get that. it done. Let's do that. No, okay. Linda, did you have a comment? Um, thank you. So great work. The visual walkthrough thing is just, that's amazing. Um, I, I have one question, which is, uh, do you have to walk through the kitchen to get to the kennels? Because in the walkthrough, that, that was the only way we got to the kennels. And, yeah. and um, that seems like a concern. So there's a door right over. I don't know if you can see that right there. Right okay. The okay. So you don't have to walk through the kitchen to get no. on the camera. Okay, that's great. And it, again, this is, it's just just the concept. Yeah. Right. So right. you know, the, all the this other will thing get. is is maybe we need to think about this in parts. So so I think this footprint is smaller than the original one. Am I right, Jackie? Yeah, the original was a little over um, 3,900 square feet. So this is the same lot, though, right? Absolutely, So yes. there is still room on this lot. Mm -hmm. 
So if we went into this thinking about it as this is the beginning, right? This is this is the bare minimum to fix the problem we've got going. And then left room for adding on the meeting center, training room, gathering, whatever. It's just a thought, but well and with this setup the way they have it, um, the original design, the thirty nine hundred square feet, did not include the area that went into that well setback because it was a fenced area. This Carl has brought it all into where we are well within distance from that 200 foot radius and there's you know we've said this multiple times there's nothing saying we can't build out in the future or even up in the future but that's in the future we right. don't we don't right. want to try to incorporate those right. but see there he's got an overview what he's built and you know I know that Mr. Latrell talked about the parking. Those are requirements. The parking requirements, that amount of space is required by code. So that's why we have so much more parking than you do a building. And that happens everywhere in town. But he's designed it to where even the outdoor area is well within that 200 foot, you know, outside that 200 foot radius. And working with DEC, you know, they've been back and forth with me multiple times through this process. You know, they're, they're well informed on this type of layout. And like Mayor Terry said, when we get the build design bid, if we're allowed to go forward with that RFP process, you know, you may have a, con a developer or contractor say, hey, the maintenance room shouldn't be here, it should be over here. That's, we're going to leave it to the professionals. You know, they've designed something and it gives us a really great layout and a model for it. But at the end, they're going to be able to tell us the, the better functionality when it comes to the build. And then, Christina, did you, did you want to? Uh, yeah. Um, so, um, I, again, yes, this is, this is a great visual um, starting place um, for moving forward. Um, you know, there. I understand that this on this site, as this building sits um, in this conceptual design, that it could be added to um, it, and we want to stay within budget. That's that's everybody's goal. Um, after last year, we've had you know we're going to be looking at budget constraints for years. Um, it's it's understood, um, but I don't want to necessarily miss potential opportunities um, that could be put in place. Um, as the office reception sits now, it could be a big enough space um, to be used as an educational um, opportunity space, but then what happens when there's a program going on and you've got potential adopters or you've got people who are you know, surrendering an animal or animal control officers bringing in an animal um, that needs to be in consideration. Um, we just talked about extending the desk and adding a door, kind of splitting that office reception area um, in half or in third, um, making it smaller. It's close to the schools. We've got at least three organizations um, in the community right now um, that could benefit from a resource and a space, you know, at um, the animal shelter um, to conduct programs. Um, Prior, um, you know, I know that these organizations have done um, programs um, at the library in the community room. Not exactly sure how um, happy they are about allowing, you know, some controlled animals um, into that community space. Um, and then in the summer, getting in there is, is almost, you know, non-existent um, because of the other programs that the library runs. Um, during the summer. So, you know, I would really like to see, I, I see a multi-purpose room that, that is, you know, can be utilized, you know, solely for educational um, opportunities um, would just be a missed opportunity. We're within walking distance of all three schools. We've got at least three active organizations um, with the community that you know, relates to animal um, care and welfare um, that could utilize that space. Um, you know, moving on, that, 
that center little hallway, even the walk through, you know, think of how many doors we went through. You know, we want this to be a functional, maintainable space by minimal employees. You know, what's going to happen when there's an emergency and you're, you know, you're in the quarantine space. You're, there's many of the areas in this current facility, you would have to go through a minimum of two doors to even reach a door that allows you access to the outside, um, which, you know, could be intense um, at the time. You know, having a safe, safe space to, um, to bring an animal into the shelter, you know, especially one that needs to go into quarantine. Um, right now, how it stands, you know, that, again, that animal would have to go through office and reception, um, either through the kitchen to quarantine or it'd have to go through that small, awkward hallway into quarantine. You know, but that can be remedied. You can put it, you know, maybe an outside door um, from quarantine, you know, directly to the outside. Um, extending that hallway all the way down um, to the exterior wall um, through storage um, and having a second emergency exit, um, you know, is a consideration. You know, these are small things that can be easily remedied, um, but one of my concerns is that this RFP for um, design, permit, and build is who's going to, you know, is there going to be allowable public comment on that final design? Um, after the Lumen presentation, I do not recall a work session after that presentation. I regularly watch the council meetings and look, you know, at the agendas. I'm waiting for things like this to happen and to make um, comments, um, and I do not recall seeing one. Um, I may have missed it, um, but one of my concerns is that this build for RFP, um, the timeline, I think is very ambitious, um, and wanting to get started as soon as possible, I am all for, but I am just concerned that you know, the RFP is going to be awarded, um, the contractor is going to have a design made, and it's just going to, it's going to be the end. It's going to, it's going to happen, and there's not going to be any further compromise on what this facility could be for our community and for the area it's in. Uh, let's go to council. Is there anyone on the Zoom? Let's go to council comments. Does anyone have comments? Well, personally, uh, it's well known that we've been waiting on this for a very long time and the facility we have is completely inadequate and I'm really excited about this because we're finally moving forward with something and I believe we have the council that's willing to find the money to do it which you have to realize that um, there's only so much money available that's why the downsizing of it um, I think everybody has to compromise just a little bit, but I, if we've got administration and council that's willing to get going on this thing and go now, I am raring to go on it because what with mo with modifications that are suggested and a few things like that, this is, this checks the boxes for me. So um, especially with Shelley there to to do a little interior decorating <laughs> at the end, so. I'm more than willing to try to get a, a head nod tonight to move ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to echo um, what uh, uh, Sue said. I feel like, first of all, I love this design and I love the simplicity of it and that it's downsized and that it's something that I feel like we can actually do now, not like contemplate and, you know, there's going to be fine-tuning, and that's going to come along with the design process, and I'm sure things will change, and maybe it won't be, like, totally perfect in the end, but things can change, and it's going to be a lot better than what we have already, and I just, I'm super ready to move forward with it. So, um, oh, also, I wanted to see if maybe one of you could explain the dog wash, um, the dog wash situation a little bit and the income potential on that for the public, just because I think that that's um, <laughs> kind of interesting. <laughs> so the, the dog wash came about, again, because I own a corgi and I spend so much time in Anchorage bathing her. Um, but 
I started talking to the gentleman that owns the pet wash in Anchorage, and you know, down to the meat of it, it was determined that what a great way to pry, try to try to bring in a revenue or some sort of source to help the animal shelter. Um, right now in Anchorage, for 26 minutes, you spend $25. And that's to bathe everything for your pet. Um, they provide towels, which we never use. I mean, they, the guy told me, there are these little hand towels. They have a squeegee in there. They, they, they have very minimal maintenance that they have to do on the project. But I just, you know, there are so many ways that the animal shelter itself without any nonprofit or anybody incorporating funds that can raise funds to help maintain the building in in the future. And you know, I know and after talking to Shelly that there's many times in the summer people call her to see if they can bathe their dog because it rolled in fish, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to go back into an RV with it. And so it's a great revenue for the shelter in general. I mean, even if you chose not to do 25 bucks and you did 10, I think you'd make money year round that would be able to be put right back into the shelter for the future. Yeah, thank you. Did you have any comments? Just that I agree with everything that's been said. I think this is something that would be um, really good to move forward with. I also would like to say that the this is not the end design basically. I mean there's going to be time for um, suggestions and to be uh, looked at and things to be modified and that this, if even if we were to try to move forward with something today, or not today but soon, um, that this would come before the community and the council for final approval anyway. So I don't see any reason why we can't hopefully try to move forward one way or the other. Oh, uh, I was just going to mention in terms of income, um, once we move and are in the new shelter and tear down what's existing, there's two city lots there to be sold, too. So that would be a source of some of the cost, or money, you know, to counterbalance the cost. Well, then I just, if I can give you one more history, because I apparently have all of it right now. Um, when we talk about educational, you know, that's one of the purposes and one of the one of the great things that we found with this location. But every teacher that contacted us when we, did, you know, council chose this spot and agreed upon this spot, it was, you know, it was based off of how Shelley interacts with them, and it was always. You know, it'd be really great. We can come over and help walk the dogs or take care of the dogs. But it was never an intentional area to have a class. It was more of that interaction of bringing them over, showing them what happens in the shelter and how they can move forward with taking care of the animals. And I think that, you know, I get that we would love we would love to have a lot of community spaces. But when it comes down to it, Shelley right now operates by classrooms coming in to see her, and if somebody comes to drop off a dog, Shelly's going to be the only one there anyway, regardless if there's a class or not. So it's something to know that we're working on, and we're still working with the borough to possibly build a dog park <laughs> right next to it. Yes, Madam, uh, Madam Mayor. So one other thing, too. So those uh, ideas that you guys said, you, if you could email the chief and put them in there, because I know they're going to have to stick by the code, like Jackie has said, so that back corner is going to need an emergency door, and that could be the door for, for bringing in a, 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 an animal, a, you know, they can extend the parking lot back there, you know, that's something that can be done, so email your suggestions to, uh, to the chief, and they can incorporate that in the RFP, and also I believe, Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the guy was donating the dog wash station? Yes, he mentioned at the very beginning of this project to possibly donate the, the whole mechanics of it. So, um, you know, I think we have some priority here. S health and safety of the animals. Clearly the health and safety of the employees. You know, visit an adoptable space for the animals. 
So let's be clear as you're developing the design of the build. Um, if, if there's public comments, I mean, you're going to have to wait through what we w would like to have, what we need to have, you know, what we would like to obtain for a certain dollar amount. Should be sent to you or to Jackie? What's the best way? I'm writing the RFP, so if you want to send them to me and CC the chief, that would be great. So, uh, jwild at cityofseward.net? Correct. And then, chief, what's your email? A, the letter A. Nickel, N-I-C-K-E-L-L, -L, at cityofseward.net. Okay. So, and, and staff have developed RFPs before, and this definitely is not going to be the final design, because no one's really, Carl, it's gorgeous, you should go into architecture, <laughs> but, um, you know, they, they are going to do a deep dive on code requirements, and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of doors, because there's separation with the animals, but they'll have to, to look at all those things. Um, comment? Do we have any other council members on phone or anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. And no public for comments? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But let's give public comment to... Uh, I've got plenty of time. No, there are, yeah, we have plenty of time. Go ahead. Great. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so my next question is, when determining the cost per square foot, um, was that based like on institutional cost or was it based on like an office Base cost. The reason I'm saying that is I don't want council to be surprised when it comes to the extra plumbing and HVAC that will be necessary for the shelter to be safe for the animals. Um, obviously, airflow is important, especially with the quarantine area. You um, and also animals are very sensitive to smell, and so you wouldn't want the dog areas to be flowing into the cat area and back. So I just want to make sure council is aware of that. So you're saying we might not even get 2,000 square feet out of it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that $250 yeah. per square foot might be a little bit of an underestimate. Mm -hmm. Unless it was based off of an institutional per square foot versus an office space. Per yeah, we'll see what those come back. And then the other uh, comment was about... Uh, dog poo won't be going down the drains. Um, it does. <laughs> I'm not saying that we need a masticator, but urine, you know, when you're hosing areas, there will be debris going down the drains um, and going into the sewer as it always does. Um, so, I'm, I, again, I'm not saying that anything fancy needs to be done, but we do need to be aware of that when cleaning and stuff like that. There's going to be stuff we do, though. I mean, you know how it works now. I mean, yeah, yeah. we scoop, and it's not going to be, it's going to be less than what we flush down the toilet by a long shot. But, know. like, if a dog has a diarrhea inside of a kennel? We still yeah, scoop yeah. up as much as we can, right, and we right. scrub with soap and bleach and break it down. And, right. you know, I mean, we have a, the floor drain with the, with the uh, grate on top. And when we do, when we use it, that grate also catches anything else too, and then that gets bleached and cleaned. So pretty much just nothing but brown water goes down. <laughs> yeah, no, that, makes, no, that makes sense. You just want to make sure right. people where it's not like 100% clean. Right. And of course, you know, I, I would really hope that there wouldn't be trench drains instead of right. individual drains for you guys. Oh, I think that's probably so much easier. Yeah. But you still have to clean the trench drains. The hair gets down there. If it yeah, right. Stuff. Well, we'll have, you know, Hopefully in the design there'll be some kind of like little grates or drains that we can clean out, like just like we do now. I and mean, we have to clean our, you know, our outside drains all the time to keep everything running. Yeah, so. like catchment yep. uh, baskets and stuff right. like that. Yeah, we have those at the CLM Center. Yeah, you just have to double check and catch everything. You gotta clean them. <laughs> yeah, you gotta clean them or else you get them back back up when you don't need it. Yeah. Uh, and I, and again, I do support that there should be another kind of public comment. Yeah, but I don't want to mislead the public that, um, you know, there's going to be some code things required by building codes that probably can't be changed in DEC codes. I'm not sure that those Yeah, they might are. not let you put a shower in a locker room or, yeah. So, so some of that public comment. And I personally am not in favor of classroom space here. I think, um, I think we need to prioritize what the function of the building is for, and I think we have ample community space. Um, I mean, we have... 
senior center and TYC, we have library. I mean, even the schools are functioning at such low student counts that maybe there's some synergy there with some of their empty classrooms that can be used. Um, the Sea Life Center. Sea Life Center, that's a Sea Life Center is not going to let you take the animals in. Sorry. Mark? Sorry to say that real fast. <laughs> It'll probably come back to, well, it'll come back to us to approve the RFP for design to build and then for the contract, so two times soon. Is there a way that that can be with members of the public in person instead of just comments to the chief and the director? Could we have a peer pizza meeting? You could, you, could, you could send comments to council, yeah. public comments to council, and then during the council meetings you can make public comments. I guess what I'm looking for is, you know, spread out a few designs and pick out the best. I mean, this is a great start. Yes, yeah, so it I, wouldn't, it I, wouldn't think require I, I think we're beyond that. Like with the design bid build, so what's going to happen is we'll give, go out with the contract of all our desires and a dollar amount, right. and then we'll get in a design bid build, we'll get that back, and they'll say this is what we will build for you for X amount of dollars checking all your boxes, or as many of the boxes that we need. So at that point, you know, it might be color of paint that we're talking about, but anything adding will then just add money to that project. So that's, unless I'm misstating it, that's where we're at with the design bid build. Um, my next question is, uh, you know, to pay for parts of the project. I think that I think they I think that I was told that the it's going to be the city's responsibility for the inside stuff. Too. And I could be misstating. I mean, does SOS want it's to down. sponsor portions of it? Well, if we had a nice work session, we could talk about this a little in detail. This is yeah. This is this, this is it. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is it. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. I'm just trying to be fun. Yeah. Um, no, we have uh, funds that we would like to use for particular amenities. I mean, whether it's, you know, some of the kennels that were offered in that uh, graphic versus some other, you know. Uh, I guess the short answer is yes, we do have some money for amenities. So getting that in writing to the chief would help because then that can be incorporated in the design bid build because then the company doesn't have to bid on those items. So that would give more money for mm -hmm. Linda? I'm just wondering if a solution would be for SOS to sponsor a meeting for the community to talk about this. But and if you ask a question to, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, at some point we have to have do to something for these animals. And I guess I thought the pressure was is to replace our current substandard animal control building. So if we ask a question, I'm sure then the lumen design at the two million would be maybe closer to where. We did have know. a similar group two years ago where it was SOS Pets, members of city council, Shelley would, um, came to the meetings as well. Um, and um, kind of, that's where the original RFP came from, was from those meetings. I'm just thinking that that we we really are where you think we are, and somehow um, there's still some feedback that that SOS is wanting to provide, and trying to do it in a timely way to tie it in with the timeline that was proposed. You know, like a week or two of to let Mark gather that detail. And, and give a response to this. And then 
that just it's, that's just over on the side, right? It's like this is the core of what we need, and these this is the wish list. And maybe they can come back in the RFP and say, and to do this, it's going to be this much, and to add this, it'll be that. Madam Mayor, unless I'm directed differently, the RFP that we're going forward, we're not going to give options. We're not going to say this is our wish list and this is what, you know, we're going to say we need to build this building for this amount. With these specifications. Well, so it'll come back. Correct. Well, I just wanted to say that since um, this, this particular um, work session was publicized and since people have looked at what is in here online, I've gotten a whole lot of feedback that everybody's ready to go with it. And so, I, you know, I'm, I'm saying let's just, you know, get on with it because it's been this long and this is infinitely better than what we have. And doable. And doable. Do you have comments? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, suggestions or comments on this, and I know we're looking at a concept, but maybe, hey, if we notice this, something to keep in mind. I think that security was a great comment, um, security mm -hmm. and safety of the staff. Thinking of COVID, with you were talking about plexiglass, all those things. Administration, do you have any? So, Madam Mayor, the, I guess at the end of the day, so I'll be reaching, the Chief and I and Director Wild will be reaching out to the council members that were not in a, able to make attendance tonight to garner their feedback as well. But at this point, administration have, just wants to get. You have four. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can move it forward. We, well, have we do. I just want to make sure we're getting yeah. feedback. For a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I know you can't take any official action this evening, but just getting a tentative. If we're going to devote staff time to moving forward with the design build RFP, we just want, you know, guidance from those members who are here. Yes, this is the direction you want us moving forward. Yes. And, yes. Okay. And again, we'll be reaching out to those members that weren't in attendance tonight to get their feedback as well. But we'll proceed. And then as soon as we have that, we'll be bringing that back to you at the second meeting in May. Okay. Second meeting. Go ahead. Can I ask if, when we get wrapped up here, if... Carl's willing to put the goggles on anybody who wants. And yep. Chris, <laughs> not the muzzle, but the goggles, because it's a 3D walkthrough. You know. Liz can tell you it's pretty awesome. It's really crazy. I was too scared, but she did it. <laughs> okay, so with that, we'll close the work session. Thank you. We should do it.